What's up everybody, Mike here with Reprint, and uh, today's video I just want to share with you guys uh, uh, some information on banding. Uh, if you have banding, I'm going to show you how to tackle that uh, with your DTF printer. This is uh, pretty much tailored to you guys with the DTF printer. So uh, right now we're looking at my Kalka 24 inch DTF printer, and uh, I don't have banding myself right now, uh, but I'm going to show you. Well, I haven't done a cleaning yet first part of the day so I likely will have banding but if you're having banding number one uh, the first thing you want to do is check your humidity right now we're struggling with humidity I'm about to build a room I'm actually gonna buy a uh, commercial grade fog humidifier uh, I'll go ahead and put a picture of what I found at the show that I'm getting ready to order uh, but we are struggling with humidity and this is gonna make uh, a big difference uh, depending on how fast you're printing the faster you're printing the more problems you're gonna have if your humidity isn't right. Uh, our humidity yesterday was 15%. I had to turn on the humidifiers. I bought three off Amazon and we're only up to 34%, but I do have 8,000 square feet. So that's number one, check your humidity. Number two, check your nozzle print. Let's go ahead and do a nozzle test. I believe I had it soaking last night. Uh, it's kind of vague to me, I've been working so much. Uh, yeah, so first thing, check your nozzle check if your nozzle check doesn't look good uh run some cleanings uh if cleanings aren't clearing up your nozzle check next you want to clean your cap tops i'm gonna move the head carriage out of the way uh i am making a series of videos today before i do my uh, weekly cleaning. I'm going to do a cleaning on this machine, but it is terrible right now. This is about uh, a, every week. I, I clean this on Sundays. Today, Sunday, I'm going to do the cleaning, but uh, it's a mess right now. The next thing we want to do is clean our cap top. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe these down. You want to make sure that the edges of your cap top are clean. I still have the cleaning solution in there, but I'm just showing you exactly. Let's wipe down them cap tops. All right, that is done. Uh, the next thing, wipe down your wiper and then repeat that cleaning process. Uh, the next step would be to clean underneath the printhead area. Oftentimes uh, you get little ink scragglers. Uh, I do not have any of this right now, uh, but we're often finding little hardened ink that is uh, on the bottom of the head carriage area that is dragging across our print. So that's the next thing I want to do. I want to be careful not to push anything in the print heads. Let's see if I can get up there with the camera. I do not want to push ink inside my nozzles. I do not want to rub on the nozzle plate. I just want to clean around the perimeter of the print heads and find any type of scraggling ink. Clean it very good. Sometimes it's hard to see, but oftentimes that can be the culprit. So here's the next thing that I would uh, personally check uh, myself if I had banding issues as well. This is something that most people overlook is your, your ink system. This one right here, they're all different, but mine has little screens. Uh, this is a ventilation system, and sometimes my screens get clogged. Uh, some people, they just loosen up the cap a little bit and make sure that you have a little ventilation. That helps greatly, or check these. Uh, you can see this one right here isn't even all the way screwed down because I check them so often. This is one of the things that I check uh, the most frequent other than my nozzle check in the bottom of the head care is just make sure that you have a good vent going on that your ink can flow properly. That's a, another good tip. That's another place I would, I would look for banding. The next thing that I would do is clean my pinch rollers. This uh, film likes to build up on the pinch rollers and I would clean this. I've seen several cases with many machines that they've just let this build up over years and it actually increases the diameter of this roller that can cause your step alignment to go off. Uh, pretty much like uh, in my early days uh, buying oversized wheels and tires for my car, it would throw off my speedometer. So I want to make sure that these get cleaned. Uh, it's best to use a microfiber cloth so we're not getting any uh, lamp paper towels. We'll, leave residue so like to raise the pinch rollers make sure we get all the sides so i can do a proper step calibration that's going to be my next step i'm going to do a cleaning and then we're going to do a step calibration some of you guys it may be called feed calibration in your software uh, but usually it's your step calibration so we're going to get these cleaned off run a test print we would uh, check our results. Again, I'm not getting banding, but uh, this is exactly what I would do. All right, so now I've got it uh, cleaned up 
much better uh, but here in the next hour it'll be back the way it was uh, my nozzle check is great uh, so I, what I want to do now is the step calibration and on this uh, particular machine on the Calca uh, you can see all these little lines and it's best to have a, a digital microscope I'm going to show you right here it's going to be hard with two holding the camera and this thing but I'm going to make it happen so what I want to check and what I'm looking for let's show you again it's hard you can see these lines right here we want to see where they overlap all right so I'm gonna go back this way all right you can see that gap right there our goal is to make to find the straightest line uh, which in my opinion I think we're off I think it might be negative one and that's why it's important to uh, use some kind of digital microscope to do your step alignment but I'm gonna show you here where they overlap uh, right there I mean you can see the overlap is nice. I'm going to look at zero. The goal is to get your it to zero. Uh, so let's go ahead and look right here. Let's scroll down. Boom. No, nope. zero is too much. I think uh, I think that we need to be at a positive one. So right there, positive one definitely looks the best. And this is very important when it comes to your uh, white ink alignment. Uh, this is off even a fraction is just going to continue your whites just going to go more and more off alignment so uh this is what not also affects banding but your your alignment throughout your run and i can see that that's i mean as good as we're going to get right there the lines are beautiful let's see if i can go back uh, this is tough but you can see that's beautiful so in my software i'm going to show you what i do so if you're running a calca machine uh this is be familiar to you this is dtf fairy uh since the results were one i'm going to hit one right there uh if it was negative one i'd hit negative one the next thing i want to do is hit calculate which is going to change this uh gear ratio right here calculate that's the steps uh right there so that's going to change uh but this is not going to take effect until i actually hit save and while i run that print uh, to show you so now when i run the test what i want is uh, my step calibration to be perfect at zero uh, so whenever I run it the next time it should be uh, zero so I'm gonna hit print here while I do that I'm gonna jump over here to print XP to you guys uh, running Hassan boards and your settings for this uh, you go to adjust step adjust and you do the same thing right here you'd hit print adjust you'd look at the the look at your results and you'd put your number in here that matches the straightest uh, and then you would follow by hitting save. I can't hit save right now, but I don't have a Hassan printer hooked up, but there'd be a save button, but this would not take effect. First, it would be if you're not plus one, again, you'd put plus one right here. You would hit calculate, very important. You'd have to calculate so it could create your, your uh, proper gear ratio, bam. And then uh, from there, always save. So it actually saves to the machine if you're not hitting save then it's not going to be effect. I'm going to show you on my other computer a BYHX uh, system to show you how to get so there. So here we are in uh, Print Manager for BYHX and yours would be under Tools Calibration and we'd go to Step Adjustment right here and it would be the same thing. You'd print your test and you'd put in the results right there. Mine you can see is uh, negative 12. This one's a little different because you just push save or save and exit and that will help you with your uh with your feed calibration all right so i think that pretty much sums it up for this video but i wanted to uh uh show you another thing that's very important when it comes to step calibration uh the step calibration in your page feed is affected by many different things uh this is a chinese printer and their uh drive system when it comes to your your uh, feed motors they're not the most accurate system uh they're just simple belts and pulleys and uh your feed calibration can change right now this is loose it's not webbed up to the machine uh you definitely uh will have different results from a machine that is not webbed and when i say webbed i mean going through your dryer uh the powder installed because tension the tension that that's going to put on this once you get your powder it's going to change your step calibration so make sure that uh you're running your step calibrations with your machine fully loaded uh, to the machine uh, because you get much more accurate results. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video helped. More great videos coming. Uh, if you haven't seen my last video, uh, I have one that you know, explains that I do have uh, phone tech support. 
So if you'd like uh, to schedule a call, we can jump on, on a call and help you with your machine. So thank you for watching. If you haven't done so, like and subscribe, and see you in the next video.